Next topic, characteristics of nonlinear system. In nonlinear systems, the response depends on the magnitude and type of input signal. The principle of superposition will not hold good for nonlinear systems. The nonlinear system exhibits various phenomena like gem resonance, frequency amplitude dependence, subharmonic oscillations, limit cycle, and asynchronous quenching. That is, the main characteristics of nonlinear systems are frequency amplitude dependence, gem resonance, subharmonic oscillations, limit cycle, and asynchronous quenching. The various phenomena that occur in nonlinear systems are going to explain. And the first one is frequency amplitude dependence. Frequency amplitude dependence is one of the most fundamental characteristics of oscillations of nonlinear system. For explaining this frequency amplitude dependence, consider a mechanical system. The mechanical system consists of mass, dashboard, and spring. Here, the spring is nonlinear. And consider the force balancing equation of this mechanical system. We know that the force balancing equation of this nonlinear system is nonlinear mechanical system is m into x double dot plus b into x dot plus kx plus k dash into x cube is equal to 0. If the spring is linear, there will not be k dash. We know that if the spring is a linear one, the equation is m into x double dot plus b into x dot plus kx is equal to 0. But here the spring is non-linear. Therefore, an extra term k dash into x cube is equal to 0. Therefore, the equation is m into x double dot plus b into x dot plus kx plus k dash into x cube is equal to 0. Where m, b and k are positive constant that is the value of mass friction coefficient and the spring constant k are positive this k dash the nonlinearity represented by the spring this k dash may be positive or negative that is k dash is positive for hard spring and k dash is negative for soft spring the spring may be hard or soft depending upon the value of k dash if k dash is positive the spring may be hard and if k dash is negative it is soft spring the frequency of oscillation depends upon the amplitude of oscillation that is in the case of a nonlinear system the frequency of oscillation depends upon the amplitude for example if k dash is zero that is if it is a linear spring the frequency remains constant whatever may be the value of amplitude but in the case of nonlinear spring if k dash greater than zero that is in the case of hard spring this frequency this frequency decreases with decreasing amplitude that is by decreasing the amplitude correspondingly the frequency will decrease next if k dash less than zero that is in the case of soft spring this frequency increases with decrease in amplitude when we decrease the amplitude this frequency will increase when k dash is equal to zero that is in the case of a non-linear sp linear spring that is k dash is equal to zero the frequency remains unchanged as the amplitude of oscillation decreases that is mainly we are going to discuss about three points in the case of frequency amplitude dependence depending upon the value of k dash that is nonlinearity represented by the spring the k dash is greater than zero it is a hard spring and if it is k dash less than zero it represents a soft spring if k dash greater than zero that is the case of hard spring the frequency decreases with decreasing amplitude and when k dash less than zero the frequency increases with decreasing amplitude these are the main points in the case of frequency amplitude dependence and the first one is frequency amplitude dependence is one of the characteristics of nonlinear system and the second one is gem resonance or 
multi-valued response. That is, the jumper res response is the frequency response of nonlinear system. The amplitude of the response may jump from one point to another for increasing or decreasing values of frequency. That is, by increasing or decreasing the uh, frequency, the amplitude jump from one point to another. For explaining that, consider a mechanical system as shown in figure 1. Consider the same mechanical system with a nonlinear spring as shown in this figure. And the equation becomes m into x double dot plus bx dot plus kx plus k dash into x cube is equal to a cos omega t. The difference is that the system is excited by an input with a cos omega t where the amplitude is a and the frequency is omega. And for explaining the gem resonance, consider the case of a hard spring and soft spring. Here I am going to explain the working of an hard spring. In the case of an hard spring, when we increase the frequency, if we increase the frequency, the amplitude x correspondingly increases. When we increase the frequency, the amplitude x, that, that is output x will increase normally and increases it up to the point 2. When we increase the frequency after this point, this amplitude will jump from 2 to 3 and from that point it increases to point 4. That is at this point to this point, that is from 2 to 3, the amplitude will jump. That is, that phenomenon is called jump resonance. That is, the amplitude of response may jump from one point to another for increasing the or decreasing values of omega. Then check, when p decreases the frequency, the amplitude correspondingly increases from 4 to 5. When again we decreases the frequency, it will jump from 5 to 6. This property is again called jump resonance. That is, the frequency will jump from one point to another for the decreasing values of omega. That is, jump resonance is nothing. The amplitude of response may jump from one point to another for increasing or decreasing values of omega. And that property is called jump, res res jump resonance or multi-valued response and the next one is subharmonic oscillation. The subharmonic oscillation is that when a nonlinear system is excited by a sinusoidal signal, the response will have steady state oscillations and these oscillations are integral submultiples of forcing frequency that is if we consider a, a system and the system is excited by a sinusoidal signal. That is, its input is a sinusoidal signal. For example, a sin omega t or a cos omega t, something like that. The response will have steady state oscillation. That is, the input is like this and the output will have steady state oscillation. This output will also consist of oscillation. But this oscillation frequency is the integral submultiples of input frequency. That is, it is not equal to the frequency as same as that of the input. It will dip, it will equal to the integral submultiples of forcing frequency that is called subharmonic oscillation that is when a system is excited by a sinusoidal signal the response or output will have steady state oscillations whose frequency is integral submultiples of forcing frequency and this phenomenon depends upon system parameters initial conditions and the amplitude of input and also the frequency these are the parameters depending upon the subharmonic oscillation that is subharmonic oscillation is that when a nonlinear system is excited by a sinusoidal signal the response will have steady state oscillations and the steady state oscillations are integral submultiples of forcing frequency and that phenomenon is called subharmonic oscillation and the next one is limit cycle the limit cycle is an important concept in the case characteristics of nonlinear system the limit cycles are oscillations of the response of nonlinear system with fixed amplitude and frequency. That is, the output of the nonlinear system consists of some oscillations with fixed amplitude and frequency. And this is explained by using 
Consider a mechanical system with non-linear damping. Here we are considering a mechanical system which consists of mass, dashboard and spring and this dashboard is a non-linear one. If it is a linear one, the equation will be m into x double dot plus b into x dot plus kx is equal to 0. But here it is m into x double dot plus b into 1 minus x square into x dot plus kx is equal to 0 and that is equation is called van der Poel equation. That is where we are considering a non-mechanical, non-linear damping. That is this dashboard is a non-linear one. And for example, if the value of x is small, that is if the value of x is small, the damping is negative and the stored energy in the damper is fed to the system. That is when the stored energy in the damper is fed to the total system. And for large values of x, this damping is positive. At that time, the damper absorbs energy from the system. From the equation, it is clear that it is not excited by a input or it is a the limit cycles have self-sustained oscillation. That is, this is it is not needed an input for excitation. The limit cycles are the oscillations of fixed amplitude and frequency without any forcing factor. That's the difference from subharmonic oscillation and limit cycle. That is, in the case of subharmonic oscillation, when the nonlinear system is excited by a sinusoidal input, the response or output will have oscillation whose frequency is an integral submultiples of forcing frequency. That is, whatever may be the input, the output will be equal to the integral submultiple frequency of that input. But in the case of limit cycle, the response or non response of nonlinear system with fixed amplitude and frequency that the output consists of response the output consists of oscillations with fixed amplitude and frequency that is difference between limit cycle and subharmonic oscillation the above system is a not a forced one that is this the input is equal to zero and this oscillations are called self excited oscillations or zero input limit cycle that is in the case of limit cycle the input is equal to zero and are, they are called self excited oscillations that is oscillations are self excited that is without any input next one is that is for this is the figure of limit cycle that is oscillations with fixed amplitude and frequency that is enough amplitude and frequencies of all the oscillations are same and the next one is a synchronous quenching that is if you are considering a system and that system has a limit cycle and the frequency of that limit cycle be omega l it is possible to quench that is it is possible to stop or eliminate that frequency by inserting another frequency of another system of frequency omega q and that property is called asynchronous quenching that is asynchronous quenching is starting it is possible to emit, eliminate the limit cycle frequency by forcing the system at frequency omega q this omega l and omega q are not related to each other and it is just a frequency used for eliminating the limit cycle frequency that is possible to eliminate the limit cycle frequency and that process is called asynchronous quenching or signal stabilization that is the, these are the five characteristics of nonlinear system that is the main five characteristics of nonlinear system are frequency amplitude dependence jump resonance subharmonic oscillations limit cycle and asynchronous quenching and the frequency amplitude dependence the frequency of the response changes for increasing or decreasing values of amplitude and the second one is jump resonance in the case of jump resonance the amplitude of response may jump from one point to another for increasing or decreasing values of omega and the third one is subharmonic oscillations that is in the case of subharmonic oscillations when a nonlinear system is excited by a sinusoidal signal the response will have steady state oscillations and the uh, frequency of that oscillations is equal to the integral submultiples of forcing frequency and the fourth one is limit cycle limit cycles are self-sustained oscillations that is it is not a forced system and the response will have frequency response will have fixed amplitude and frequency oscillations and the fifth one is asynchronous quenching in the case of asynchronous quenching the limit cycle frequency is 
quenched by or stopped or eliminated by forcing the system at a frequency omega q and that property is called asynchronous quenching or signal stabilization these are the main five characteristics of nonlinear system thank you